Hey everybody, happy Thursday to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now all this is starting to ramp up. Not only all this flooding that's going to go on for days and it's going to go further past that. It's going to add up to a lot of rainfall. Plus these low pressure systems are forming still over the Atlantic towards Florida, towards the Gulf of Mexico. We have a couple of them that will form and it is trending like crazy. Now, one change that is definitely going to happen is you do have some drought in Florida, especially for southern Florida. I believe all that is going to disappear and then some. Also, some of the drought for Texas. So, it's going to be mostly around Waco, all the way down San Antonio, all the way down southern Texas, right on the edge of Houston. So, your drought is definitely going to disappear and then some, which is not really a good thing. There's going to be a lot of flooding. This is all coming at one time within a few days. Now, these storms are going to be training all day long, all the way from Texas, all the way to Louisiana, southern Arkansas, towards Mississippi, towards Tennessee. And as you get to the afternoon, it's really going to ramp up as you go across Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, all the way into the early morning hours. So there's going to be a lot of storms coming in early morning hours. Plus over here for the West Coast, these storms are coming in for you late this afternoon around 5 o'clock and it's going to be storming all evening long. But as this pushes towards the Mid-Atlantic, this is a little bit of severe weather we have for today, mostly going to be for winds and a little bit of hail. But there is going to be some cells that's going to pass through later this afternoon. Anytime from 2 to 6 p.m., there could be some hail inside of it, especially for Delaware. But there is some storms that's going to pass by all the way until later tonight before that pushes away. But as this trains, as you go early in the morning for tomorrow, still getting a lot of storms for Texas, a lot of storms for Louisiana going across northern Alabama, northern Mississippi. And that is going to carry across upstate South Carolina, also western North Carolina, towards Virginia, towards Maryland, and Delaware as you go into Friday. So there is more storms coming, but really the big threat, because this is already going to cause a lot of flooding, the big threat is what's forming up out here in the Atlantic, because it's splitting apart into two pieces now. And instead of just flooding going on for the South Central, it's going to bring very heavy flooding across the whole South and Southeast. I will show you the latest updates, because we have some other potential options with this system now for today national weather service has put out this muscle scale discussion about heavy precipitation coming bringing flash flooding in all this green area but it is going to grow but there's no chances for tornadoes but you can't rule out one maybe around virginia going towards maryland and delaware there's some pretty nasty cells later this evening but you see it is for wind and a little bit of chance for hail as well so here's your cities and states at risk for the severe weather that is for today. And it is going to be a damaging wind event with some serious thunderstorms. And you can see this from National Weather Service. Isolated, strong, and severe thunderstorms are possible this afternoon and evening across parts of the southern Appalachians into the mid-Atlantic, as well as across south-central Texas and the Texas coastal plains. Now, National Weather Service did put it as some severe thunderstorms possible late today, but far southern region into our slight risk has a chance from 4 to 8 p.m. Damaging wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour, quarter-sized hail, and the tornado threat remains very low, guys. Literally in 24 hours, it's going to start adding up to two, almost three inches of rain. And as you go for the full 72 hours, we can't even quite see that far, it's still adding up to very heavy rainfall for Texas, Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and Mississippi. Anywhere from two to five inches of rainfall coming. Plus, when you go from Friday to Saturday, it's going to add up to more rainfall as all this trains. We just have a stalled front, guys, and these storms are just going in this direction for a few days. So you have Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina with upstate South Carolina getting even heavier, and North Carolina, a big hot spot of anywhere above two inches of rainfall just in 24 hours. But you can also see how much rainfall actually is going to come down after we get these surface lows coming, bringing the precipitation. And you can see with the Euro all the way till Sunday. But once you keep going and you get these next two systems that pass by, it brings a lot of rainfall for the rest of the southeast. And now there's a lot of hot spots of getting over six, even seven inches. The max is eight inches over here from Mississippi and southern Mississippi. A lot of heavy rainfall coming with all this extra precipitation that's coming with this circulation, guys. There's two storms. One's going into Atlantic. The other one is going to go in the Gulf, 
bounce around for a while around Florida and the Bahamas, bringing a lot of rainfall. The whole southeast is under extreme rainfall coming. Now, this is going to help you dry out with Florida, also with Texas, but this is just too much. So literally, we're looking at this in five days, and then five days past that, potentially this within five days after, guys. A lot of rainfall. So of course, we have some flooding risk. So you are in a slight risk once again from San Antonio to Houston all the way to northern Louisiana for today. For tomorrow, it's going to be the same area with a little area of marginal starting to stretch out towards Tennessee and Kentucky. And as you go through Saturday, it's going to stick around. More marginal, but now your slight risk is moving across Louisiana and Mississippi all the way up to Jackson. A lot of flooding coming with this train of storms, guys. And it's already rare enough to even be talking about any kind of surface pressure, but we do get some front-induced lows that do happen. But I see a lot of shear on this system. I will show you. It will be fighting it the whole way. We're still going to be in a strong La Nina pattern, guys. This is your velocity potential anomaly from the Euro, and you can see that right over our region, from the 16th all the way to the 18th, we're going to be in some favorable environment for something to form up. And GFS sees this as well, all the way from the 16th through the 18th, right in our region. And once you go from the 18th to the 20th, there's a more favorable environment, but this is further to the east. This is more like the MDR, our main development region, or out into the Atlantic. But our temperatures are already above average, especially in the Gulf and especially across the southeast. Now, this is all in Celsius, but as you can see, you're starting to get in this brown in there. And once you get in that brown, you get into the high 20s, Almost 30, where you're talking about 80 to 85 degree temperatures and all this dark red and these brown sections. That includes pieces over the southeast. So it's definitely in the high 70s, getting into the high 80s in some areas. Now, National Hurricane Center still don't have anything posted for this yet. So as soon as something comes out, I will post it. Now, you can see with the euro, with your vorticity, after all these storms train over all the way till Sunday. Then you start getting a surface low. You start to get some circulation, a little twining up in Atlantic, and you start to get one that breaks off and goes into the Gulf of Mexico. And that has been trending not only with multiple models, multiple model runs, and then swings up into the southeast, bringing a lot of precipitation, bringing some winds as well. But a lot of this is showing that this could actually bounce around, get pushed by this high pressure we have coming in and swing it back by Florida Keys, Northern Bahamas, by Cuba somewheres and still stay around. That's what National Weather Service sees. I, I will show you. But you can see on your precipital water just how much precipitation is going to be training. It is going to be training from Texas all the way to the Mid-Atlantic for days. And then as you get that front pushing it over, then you get a high ridge on the western side, you got one on the east side, you got one on the west side. It's just a nice trough coming down, and it pulls just northern, right in the Gulf, right into the south, with all that other heavy rainfall that is coming, bringing some winds as well. And you can see this on multiple ensembles, the Euro and the GFS. This is a GFS, this is all your ensembles, but let's look right here, just your controlled member. Literally in four days, you're going to start getting an upper level low forming over the Atlantic. And after that pushes off into the Atlantic, there is a second piece that's come into the Gulf. You can't see it too good, but I will zoom in for you. Now you can see over here in Ensemble 2 where it shows that something could be strengthening up over eastern Florida and maybe do something. And that's actually what the control member of the Euro is seeing, guys. But still, this is the GFS. The control member is showing it'll be an upper level low and somewhat stay weak because it's hitting shear the whole time. But you can see from all the members that only this one right here is showing that. And there is one wrote down here on 22 showing it by Western Florida. But the majority of them show that it will be something weak, if anything at all, just a group of disorganized thunderstorms. And when you look at the ensembles from the Euro, you can see what the chances are of these forming up. So as this comes into the Atlantic, we get that first upper level low. And you can see how all the low pressures agree that this one is coming out here. So as that goes by, literally in four to five days away, starts becoming something and goes out into the Atlantic. Then as we get towards April 11th and April 12th, then we started getting some surface low potential over here in the Gulf of Mexico, guys. And that grows up as a chance 
but then weakens right back down, getting here, hit by a lot of shear, and goes away. Very weak possibilities, if anything. You can see the numbers here. The strongest one so far is a possible 996. So the majority show that it will be over 1,000 millibars. It will be a weak system. But one thing that is short is that it has a lot of shear coming from the west to the east. So if anything tries to form up, it will not be able to do anything anything is going to hit with so much shear but you can also see this on your precipital water so as you see we're trying to get this group of thunderstorms flowing over and it gets together still but look right there it starts getting hit on the western side with a lot of shear and really dissipates it that's why it can't really do anything then the front just pushes that away and as that tries to form up in the gulf it just gets so much shear from the western side it can't do anything it just rips it apart but there is a possibility that as we go from Saturday all the way to Monday that it could bring up 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts right off the coast of the Carolinas. But you can see this with National Weather Service. So as you go through Saturday, you get that stalled front. And once you go through Sunday, then you get the opportunity for a surface slow to form over here right off the Carolinas. And another one, something very weak in the Gulf. And once you go through Monday, that one is going to push out, especially for Tuesday into the Atlantic. But once you go to Wednesday, then that surface low gets pushed way out here by the Florida Keys, by Cuba, over here by the Bahamas. And as you go through Thursday, it comes back a little bit, but it's still 1,012, guys. The surface mean pressure in the ocean is 1,013, so that is very weak. And you can see with the second one with the Ural, that is very, very weak. And at best, it gets down to 1,001 millibars, guys. Still a weak system, so I think at best, it's just going to bring a group of disorganized thunderstorms, bringing your biggest threat, which is going to be some very serious flooding. And you can see also on the other models, on the Canadian, it shows it even weaker than the Euro is showing. Matter of fact, if you look at the GFS, which showed it the strongest, it showed a possible tropical storm over the Carolinas, you can see the GFS has it weaker than the Canadian. So I really think this is just going to turn into a group of disorganized thunderstorms. I think the National Hurricane Center will put something out, but I think it will be for flooding. Now let's pick our winner for the solar weather station for today. Jano Cartret, congratulations, you are the winner of the solar weather station. Make sure you contact me at this email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. That way I can send this to you as soon as possible. Sending prayers for the families that lost life this morning. Thanks for being here for us, Weatherman Mark. God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much for the prayers. Missouri unfortunately has lost five people over there due to the severe weather so thank you so much i'm sure everyone does appreciate it god bless you and your family and remember everybody we are giving away another one for tomorrow i really believe that we have a pretty major flood threat coming out of all this guys so there's a lot of people that does need this precipitation all this rainfall but where all this is going to fall they really don't need all this rainfall and there's going to be a lot of flooding coming out of this so thank you so much for your time god bless you and your families i think it's pretty crazy we're even talking about anything in the gulf or the atlantic over here in the beginning of april that's pretty wild but do prepare for those floodings because that is a pretty serious event you're getting all them inches of rainfall in such a short period of time psalm 120 in my distress i cried unto the lord and he heard me Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Woe is me that I sojourn in Mazek, that I dwell in the tents of Kedar. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. I am for peace, but when I speak... They are for war. Amen. Please be aware of this flooding. This could turn into a pretty serious issue just with the flooding alone. And remember, all glory goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he blesses you every day of your life, you and your families. The best of the best. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.